In this set of videos, we are going to review some of the basics of working with complex numbers. And this series of videos, it's intended for students entering EE1202, which is Introduction to Electrical and Computer Engineering 2. Now, before we look at complex numbers, I thought it would be a good idea to uh, talk about other types of numbers. So what are some different types of numbers that we have? To start with, we have uh, what people call the natural numbers. And these are just the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay. Another uh, class or set of numbers is the integers. And this will include all of the natural numbers, but it also includes zero as well as all of the negative um, whole numbers, so negative one, negative two, et cetera. We also have rational numbers. So what is a rational number? A Rational number is any ratio of two integers. So some examples of rational numbers would be uh, 13 over 28, uh, negative 123, over uh, 57 and etc. So any ratio of two integers, such as these two numbers, these would be examples of rational numbers. Now it's maybe worth noting that the rational numbers uh, contain the integers. And that's because every integer is a ratio between itself and the number one. So for example, uh, you know, three over one gives you three, uh, zero over one gives you zero and so forth. So every integer is just a ratio uh, between itself and one, okay? We also have the Irrational numbers. And as the name suggests, these are numbers that are not rational numbers. So. So some examples of irrational numbers are the square root of two would be an irrational number. Uh, pi is also an irrational number. Uh, e is also an irrational number as well. And looking at the different types of numbers that we've listed so far. So we started with the natural numbers. And then we sort of extended the natural numbers to the integers by considering number zero as well as the negative whole numbers. And then we could extend the integers even further
by considering uh, ratios between integers to get the rational numbers. And then we have uh, the irrational numbers, which are uh, distinct from the rationals. And finally, for now, if we consider the set of all the rational numbers together with the set of all irrational numbers, that would give us the real numbers. So real numbers are just any number that is a rational number or an irrational number. And so in this picture here, the, the two sets, rational numbers and irrational numbers, those two together would constitute the set of all the real numbers. Now, one property of real numbers is that if you take any non-zero real number, then if you square that number, it should result in a positive real number. So it will be greater than zero in particular. So for example, take a number like negative two, and if you square it, it gives you a positive number, in this case, positive four. So numbers that don't satisfy this property are known as imaginary numbers. So as an example, if we uh, consider the equation x squared equals negative 1. This equation would have no real solutions, because no real number squared could possibly give you negative 1 as a result. So while this equation has no real solutions, it does have imaginary solutions then. So namely, the solutions would be the square roots of minus 1. And it's uh, customary, at least for electrical engineers, to use the letter j to denote a square root of negative 1. Mathematicians will typically use I instead of J, uh, but for various reasons, electrical engineers prefer to use the letter J for a square root of negative one instead. So then you could say the solutions to the equation X squared equals negative one are X equals plus or minus J. Now the name imaginary numbers, I think that's uh, kind of unfortunate because uh, it leads people to think that imaginary numbers are somehow fake numbers. So I kind of want to dispel that notion uh, if uh, anyone watching this was thinking something along those lines. So historically, uh, people have always been kind of suspicious of new numbers when they were first introduced or discovered. So for example, the number zero uh, was invented or discovered uh, after um, the notion of natural numbers. And uh, not everyone was accepting of the number zero as being an actual number. Uh, people who were kind of suspicious, they would think things like, how can nothing the something. And then negative numbers, they were also uh, not accepted by everyone. Uh, people, I guess, didn't really know how to interpret negative numbers. And with irrational numbers as well, 
Irrational numbers are also not accepted uh, when they were first discovered or invented. And there's kind of um, a story. Uh, I don't know if the story is true or not. I don't think uh, people actually know if it is true or not. But in ancient Greece, there was some guy who managed to prove that the square root of two is an irrational number. And Pythagoras, he was so disturbed by the existence of a number that is not rational that he supposedly had this guy sentenced to death, uh, supposedly by drowning. So as you can see, historically, people have uh, not been accepting of new numbers. And the same would have been true of imaginary numbers as well. So even though imaginary numbers come up quite naturally in trying to solve even uh, simple equations like uh, x squared equals negative one, uh, but people couldn't really, or they didn't know how to interpret imaginary numbers. And therefore, they were met with a lot of suspicion. Uh, but that said, uh, imaginary numbers, they are no less real in the like, non-mathematical sense than any other type of number. And the reason why we are going over complex numbers is because they prove to be a very useful tool for electrical engineers in particular. Uh, for example, when you guys are uh, analyzing AC circuits, and you'll learn more about that in your classes uh, as you continue along in your studies. Uh, but lastly, uh, I haven't quite mentioned what a complex number is yet, so I'm just going to wrap up the video by telling you guys what a complex number is. So a complex number is a number of the form a plus j b, where a and b are any two real numbers. And j is our uh, square root of negative 1. So j is the uh, imaginary number. So a complex number is a combination of uh, real numbers and imaginary numbers then. In the next videos, we are going to learn how to interpret complex numbers and how to do some basic uh, arithmetic operations with them. And I might do a video showing you guys a little bit of how you might use it in your class uh, if I have the time for that.